Oh, okay. So this is the podcast. <laughs> it was, we, we reference specific visual stuff that's happening. And there's also a very specific, uh, this is a brand new drug. It's called Flash. It's available uh, at all, every table. It will fuck you up. Don't take more than two packs. Uh, two packs? <laughs> that's a lot. Just, just kidding. This is just candy and it is delicious. But it's like Xbox candy, which does sus look suspiciously like drugs a little bit, right? You put it under your tongue, under the tongue. That's how you. What drugs have you taken? All, all of them. Uh, oh, this is a podcast. <laughs> this is a podcast. I've taken none of them. Um, we go to the. Oh, and Ed, how, give it up for Ed. Our <laughs> Diet Coke. Thank you, Ed. Mm. Uh, we get to do events like this a lot. We get to go to events like this a lot, which is always super fun for us. Uh, video game events. We go to a lot of them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to a, a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> You looked at me, but you'd filled in all the information already. <laughs> so I was like, all I, mean, I can... All yes I, and me. All I have is... I mean, we're married. But Yes, but all I have is the yes and. Yes. There's nothing after the and, because you covered everything in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. We go um, to a lot of video game events. That's true, Kumail. <laughs> and at every single one of these events, they always have a ton of games set up. Tonight, we have, uh, obviously, Ori in the Blind Forest, which is the reason we're all here tonight. Yes. For Ori. Ori in the Blind Forest. We also have, um, I believe the game is called the uh, the roller, I keep calling it the roller coaster game, Scream Ride. Scream Ride is here. Have you guys played yeah. Scream Ride? I played that game. That game's awesome. You can make a roller coaster and then you can ride the roller coaster and then you can get a big fucking thing and uh, destroy it. <laughs> you could just have like a thing, it goes round and round and you have a little metal ball. And you're like, fuck what I made. And then you just <laughs> hurl does, stones at does it. Does Phil Collins' The Circle of Life play while you're doing it? Because that's perfect. You mean Elton John's Circle <laughs> of Life? <laughs> Doesn't Phil Collins... Oh, he does say, you'll be in my heart. What is his song from the Lion King soundtrack? Does anyone know? I think know? that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She knows. Is that a Lambda, Lambda, Lambda? Fucking hell, that is gorgeous. That is a Revenge of the Nerds cardigan. What a perfect event you're at. Yeah, um, um, yeah so... Uh, and also State of Decay is here, which is a game, it's the Xbox One version of a game that if you listen to our podcast, uh, I have raved about constantly. It was one of my favorite games. Yes. Um, so I'm very excited that's coming out on Xbox One. Have you, who has gotten to play games tonight? Anyone? Woo! And we're gonna kind of have you guys ask questions and talk about what you think about them, but it's always interesting that they serve very greasy food <laughs> and then expect you to play things with your hands. I don't think they care because it's not their controllers. That's a good point. It's Microsoft's controllers. And you know who has a lot of controllers? Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of them. I, was, I thought it'd be so great if the president walked in and he just had Xbox controllers glued to him. <laughs> and that's how you know. He has to do that every day. He's like Mr. Roboto. Yeah, he has like a suit of just Xbox controllers. And then you just press him in the middle. Yeah. Does, wait, does he have Connect? Could you, could you be like, walk over here, Xbox, walk over here, and then he would come to you? Maybe. Let's but find he's the out. president. He doesn't have to do. He doesn't have to do anything. I say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh, there's always. Have you picked up a controller that someone else was playing that is disgusting? Yeah, I picked one up over there, and it <laughs> it felt like someone had rubbed raw fish on it. It just was like slimy and just like squishy, but in a great way. Such a good way. Because I just, and I, my hands get sweaty when I play video games. Do I'll, they? I'll get real. Yeah. Do, who gets sweaty hands when they play? Yeah. I get sweaty. And then I'm, there's always a moment, and I've done this, where I'm handing off the controller to someone else and I'll blow on it before I do it. <laughs> I cool it off. Yeah. I just get hot handed. I just took a sip of this Just Diet Coke, and it's <laughs> very strong. Very strong, Just Diet Coke. This just diet coke is very strong. It's if making my eyes water. If you needed some burger to counteract it. No, no, no. We're you the Andorra kids. We'll drink and eat on stage. We don't care. Uh. <laughs> America. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I was um, thinking. So we've been. We actually have been playing Ori and the Blind Forest for a little bit. Should we talk about the game that we yeah, were talking about? Yeah, past three or four days. Yeah. We've been playing it a lot. It's a wonderful, fucking awesome game. It's beautiful, as you can see. The graphics are unbelievable. The one thing about this game is that you will cry within the first 10 minutes. <laughs> Guaranteed. And that's what's interesting. Those of you playing it here tonight, you're getting to play it, which is awesome. But the prologue to the game, 
um, is which you get to play a little bit of, but it's like mostly kind of a uh, mostly some cut scenes. mostly very sad. And when I say cutscenes, I mean like gut wrenching, destroy your soul scenes. They're yeah. amazing. Yeah, we started two days ago, and we were like, do, do we want to go through this right now? Um, <laughs> And it was just very sad, very affecting, and it's impressive for a video game to do that in the first 10 minutes. In the first 10 minutes, And you yeah. realize most video games don't have that kind of emotional content, so what we decided to do was take old games uh, and see if we could write an emotional backstory to them so that the next time you play them, you put that backstory on, and You'll then cry. that makes you sad. Yeah, that's our You goal. know how we all want to be sad? That's the premise we you have to buy. We call this emotionalize a video game, and we might even get you guys involved if you come up with any fun ones. Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Um, okay, I'll go first. It's, uh, no, you go first. So the band, uh, everyone knows the game Rock Band. Uh, so what if Rock Band, so here's the backstory. Your band had a one-hit wonder way back in the mid-'80s. Since then, you've been trying to tour and write more music, but nobody wants to hear any of your new shit. They just want to hear your one-hit wonder. Uh, you've rejected all the tours where they're like, we get all the one hit wonders together and we go on tour. You won't do any of that. Uh, you decide to go on one last tour. You get the guys back together. You're all in your 50s and 60s. Yeah. You, can't, you can't even rock the long hair anymore. You get the opportunity to play at, like, let's say, the Troubadour here in town. One night only, sold out. And then you go on stage and play fucking rock band. <laughs> yeah. That is the backstory. It's story called rock band. The Right Said Fred Story. <laughs> Yeah, fuck those guys. You could go. Do you remember that song? I'm um, too sexy yeah. for a second hit, apparently. <laughs> wow, I am going back in the past, roasting people. Kajagoogoo? Could you do Kajagoogoo? I too don't shy? know what their song too is. Too shy? Too shy? Mm -hmm. Too shy to have another hit. <laughs> Kajagoo, go home. That sounded racist, and it wasn't meant to. Um, Give me another one and I'll do it. Oh, you want to do another one-hit wonder band? Yeah. Um, fly, flock of seagulls. Flock of seagulls? They flew away. <laughs> do not give him that. Yes! Do not give him that. I saw someone in the back going, <laughs> what is happening? Um, so I have, okay, I have Paperboy. First of all, he's underage. So he's an underage worker. Okay. That's a bummer. It. That's a bummer. Also, he's a kid. Why do you think he needs money? What do you think he, wh what is he raising money for? What do you think? Uh, his, his AIDS? AIDS is a great answer. Uh, that would be crazy if in the 80s when Paperboy came out, they were like, by the way, this uh, game raises money for AIDS. <laughs> Not even the game, but the paper route within the game. The paper route. Yeah. We're doing barely anything to cure AIDS. <laughs> we're making uh, $20 a day. <laughs> Just on Sundays. So, yeah, why does he have to have a paper route? I don't know. You fill that in yourself. Maybe his mom lost her job, and uh, she's so sad and won't leave the couch and get dressed. <laughs> so, paper boy. So, she's an alcoholic. Great. That'll make you cry. Do another one, Emily. Uh, Legend of Zelda. So, you have Link. He's like a young man. He lost his sister in a tragic vending machine accident. <laughs> he blames himself, as he was the one that encouraged her to reach her hands in and then it toppled over on top of her. Oh no. So Link, uh, rather than being an adventurous young man who's you know, dungeon crawling, he's actually locked in his own mind and the dungeons are just the layers of guilt he feels. <laughs> so the dungeons, are, he has, lo he's locked in his own mind? Yeah, he's, it's the legend of, the z of uh, Zelda maybe was the sister's name or maybe that's the vending machine company's name. I haven't figured that Who out. Who knows? <laughs> um, I'll do Tetris. You're just trying to fit in and find someone <laughs> who will make your insecurities disappear. But instead, you just find people who make you feel like you have holes inside. And then you get to the top of the screen and you die. At some <laughs> point, I stopped trying <laughs> to... To make it a Tetris thing work? <laughs> yep. So pretty good. Uh, Burger Time, uh, great, great game. This game is actually a comment on the plight of cattle ranchers in America. Given the ever-shrinking supply of cattle ranches in America, uh, there is a whole narration to the game that explains all of this, but because it's in an arcade and uh, you're constantly just hearing other games, you actually never hear the narration. So to us, it just looks like a fun game where you sprinkle salt and pepper on eggs. It's not. Yeah. It's People not. are losing their jobs. People are losing their... And that fucking chef. God, I love um, that game. I have... Pong is two people who are in love with each other and they're trying to send messages, but they don't have hands. 
So you it just bounces back. She, you all right, sweetheart? That's great. Thank you. <laughs> they just don't have hands. They don't have hands. I'll do one more real quick. Okay. Halo yeah. is about, yes, great game. It's about <laughs> Master Chief and Cortana are in love, but they can never really consummate their relationship because she's a hologram. Good point. And does not have parts. None of the parts that are required, except for a heart. Aww. What a great audience. <laughs> Love this audience. Uh, Angry Birds. The gameplay basically stays the same, but the cutscenes are from the pig's perspective. <laughs> Every time they try to rebuild their that community. That is the saddest. <laughs> Every time, <laughs> time they try to rebuild their community, these flying monsters come and destroy it, shaking them to their very foundation, forcing them to start over. Uh, the birds are basically the... Oh, well, okay, maybe I won't say that. <laughs> uh, it's basically going to be called Angry Birds uh, and Sad Pigs. Oh, <laughs> There's a... Uh, and then I'll do just this one. It's uh, um, Double Dragon, which at, have, has anybody... I just beat Double Dragon again for the first time like a month ago. Again for the first time. Again for the first time. <laughs> I mean, I saw it with new eyes, and I was playing with a friend, and at the end, you rescue the girl, and then the two brothers have to fight, <laughs> and whoever wins gets the girl, so she doesn't have a say in it. Wait, did you make this story up, or this is just no, the story? No, that's what happens. <laughs> That's just the reality of it. Very sad. The other saddest game I can think of is Frogger. That's just <laughs> sad. That's just sadness. That is a very sad game. Someone should make a movie from the perspective of Frogger, like just trying to get home. It would home. be 30 seconds long. <laughs> he's gonna make it. No, he's not. Is his name Frogger, or do we call him Frogger? His name's probably like... Uh, Roadkill. <laughs> Roadkill. Roadkill. His name's probably like David. Because frogs have David. David is most common. Frogs frog have name. David names. Yeah. <laughs> Should we bring out our guest? M let's move that stuff I'm gonna over. I'm going to move the burger. Yes. Uh, we're going to bring out our guest. We're going to bring out uh, two of the gentlemen that are the most responsible for the game that we're all here for tonight. Uh, so please welcome to the stage Thomas and Gennady. Thomas and Gennady. <laughs> Thomas and Gennady. Thomas and Gennady. Thomas and. Hello, gentlemen. Come on over. Have seats, guys. By the way, both of them are sporting gorgeous, gorgeous uh, Ori and the Blind Forest t-shirts. Oh, nice. Are these shirts that would be available for purchase or for anything? They're completely oh. oh, yeah. yeah you have to hold this to your face. <laughs> <laughs> hold it around this area. Are they really exclusive? We can't get them? Well, right now they're completely exclusive, but you should tweet Phil Spencer. <laughs> Everyone tweet Phil Spencer. Xbox P3, something like that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so you guys are the, uh, wh what did you guys do? Uh, yeah, what are your roles in the what game? What are your roles in the creation of this game or in the I was the senior coffee maker. <laughs> 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 Wait, except you guys didn't even live in the same city. I would never live with that guy. Never. <laughs> so Gennady is from Israel. Yep. And you live in Vienna. Right on. So these gentlemen live in completely two different, di completely, co co I can't say that. I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. They live completely two, co oh, it's harder than you think it's going to be. It really is. It really is. Uh, they live in two completely different completelys, and, <laughs> but you guys live in different completelys, right? You yeah. guys Completely. Yeah. yeah. And you created this game, essentially you collaborated for this game over Skype. Yeah, the idea was. We completed the game over Skype. Yeah. yeah. Completely. Um, the <laughs> idea was the idea was we just wanted to work with the right people and get get really 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 good people together, right? So the idea was that we created this kind of like virtual studio where we just work with people from all around the world. It's amazing. So what are the challenges to working with someone that you're in a different country, different time zone, different everything? There are no challenges at most studios. Really? <laughs> <laughs> <It was. laughs> we overcome them. <laughs> wow. Well, the PR team has had a talk with you. I see. <laughs> Everything was great, <laughs> and we made it. And well, I will say, whatever you made an amazing game out of it. I, I think actually, you know, one of the challenges is the communication because you know you the internet communication can get challenging because a lot of time you don't really talk to the person, you actually chat with the person, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you just don't come across the, the way you want to. <laughs> and we're all super passionate about the game. Everybody has you know a huge, huge passion for what he does, and you sometimes have to give people criticism. And then that's where you have to learn to communicate over internet in ways that you know they're not you know not you don't have to do that when you're just when you're face to face because it's just natural. Yeah. 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 But you learn to use emoticons, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everything you've done, smiley uh. face. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the sugar at the end. Hey, 
We will not completely not throw this away. But yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> this might need another iteration. <laughs> Working that. So were there, um, uh, let's get into it. Were there specific times where you guys <laughs> were like, uh, have uh, arguments? Me yeah. Us? Yeah. Never. <laughs> what happens every single day? Happens every single every day. Single day? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. And, and it has to. It, it has to. Really, at Moon, we are. Oh, can we make him a little bit louder? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, at Moon, we, we really just a, v a very, very small team, right? And everybody's giving each other kind of like criticism, right? But that's also how we're kind of like driving quality. We just want to make the best games and are just really pushing each other all the time. I'd yeah. rather have people who are passionate, and, and you can see the passion in this game because it is really, really fantastic. So let's talk about this game. So this game is Ori in the Blind Forest, and um, it's a uh, Ori is the wood, uh, the forest sprite that you control. Yep, correct. Yeah. And um, it's this sort of gorgeous, it feels like anime inspired, like some of it reminds me of like Miyazaki movies in a really great way. So like, what were your inspirations behind like the, the art the style or it. the story of it? Because there's like sort of an environmentalist message to it as well, it seems like. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was exactly that. I mean, we, we grew up with, uh, you know, animated films like uh, Lion King, uh, The Iron Giant, that kind of stuff. Ah. That, that inspired us. Uh, Miyazaki, obviously, like the uh, Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, that kind of stuff. Like, it, it yeah. definitely, like, these things inspired us. At the same time, we were inspired gameplay in terms of gameplay from uh, games like Super Metroid, uh, A Link to the Past, and so on and so on. So those, yeah. those were huge inspirations for us. Yeah, for me... Uh, Iron Giant was my test movie for when I first started dating a girl. I'd be like, hey, l let's watch this movie, see how you feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> let's just see. And if they were like, hey, it's kind of for kids, I'm like, get out of my home. <laughs> and then Emily was like, Love Great. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I passed that test. If you don't cry watching that movie. You might not be human. You might not be human. That's true, which is another good thing. Right at now. Excuse me? You can so try this try with Ori. With Ori now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ori, well, that was the other thing we talked about it briefly is that it's a v it starts off, it's very emotionally moving because yeah. it's Ori, and then what's the name of the mama monster? Naru. 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 Yeah. She's not a monster, though. No, she's a mama not to Ori. Not all moms are monsters. I'm not sure about your no. childhood. But <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> very insightful. <laughs> that should be your next game so I can finally beat it and figure out. What the <laughs> fuck is going on there? Um, you know how all moms are monsters. No big deal. You know, <laughs> you know how moms hate you and want to... Anyway. Yeah, they uh, know, they're not happy with anything you're doing? Mothers. They don't know what podcasts are? Yeah. I know when I say mother monster, I'm being redundant. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Nori, yes. Nori, oh, so, sorry. so, it's Ori and Naru, Naru. And can we say it's in the first five minutes of playing this game... Intense things happen. Intense things happen. Very and intense. Very, very intense. And uh, how did you guys decide to like, because it's such an emotional start for a game that's so like cute looking and beautiful looking. Well, the idea was with the prologue, we just wanted to introduce uh, people to our world and the characters, right? And obviously we needed kind of like this reason for Ori. The, the premise was for him to kind of like go out and do something, right? And yeah, it just happens in writing. I don't know. Uh, you just sit down with a piece of, piece of paper and then write it and then, you know. And what were your roles in the game specifically? Like what? Well, I'm the I'm the game director. I wrote the story. I uh, designed a lot of the most of the levels, um, and yeah, directed the game. And what was your role? I co-founded Moon Studios with Thomas, mm -hmm. and uh, my official role is kind of you know lead engineer, director of technology, whatever you want to call it. But you know we're such a small s team, and I think what is ac what is really remarkable about Moon Studios is that you get to do a lot of things that are not necessarily your job title. You just <laughs> to get a make it everything kind of work. Yeah. So I did you know, some project management and some with arguments coffee. with Thomas and, and preparing coffee, which is essential for, <laughs> for people. Because, you know, it's it impossible. Sucks at it. Uh, I'm, I'm learning. I'm still improving it. This is part of the moon culture, you know, giving feedback. <laughs> <coughs> hey, uh, coffee. Gennady, your coffee today was a little weak, but smiley face. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rocco so Mao, yeah. So it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> thanks. Is there a Love lot of the too. team here? How many of the how many people from Moon are here? Well, uh, Moon is only three people. Is it three? No, no. we're oh, a bit it's more. more. Okay, we're about nine core people. Plus, we we do hire contractors when we need to scale up and, and, and okay. ship uh -huh. a game sometimes. And, and, and so all nine people worked on this, and you had other people coming in. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, the other thing I love about this game, I'm sort of jumping around. So we've been playing it for the last few days. Uh, 
few days. What I really love about the game is that some of it's the platforming and stuff. It's like kind of hardcore. Like it's hard in a really good way. Like I like old school platformers where like you have to jump over the red lava and then time and jump off the wall up to the other thing. So when I started playing the game, I didn't expect it to be as uh, has challenging as bite. Uh, it has bite. Yes, yeah. it it feels like because I play, a, you know, it feels like when I play uh, side scrollers now, they're all like pretty easy. Jump down. Yeah, this one's like pretty intense too? in a in a great way. I think as a designer, um, it's like climbing a mountain, right? It's it's you have you have if you if you actually if you actually climb a mountain, you have this one kind of feeling. But if you uh, take the lift to the mountain. You have a different feeling, right? It's right. It's that that's that sense of accomplishment when you actually see something and and think like, oh my god, like I look up there and it's really diff it's gonna be really difficult, right? Yeah. But then you actually do it. There's just something about that that is just great, right? And I think we, uh, um, we grew up with a lot of these games. Like I, I grew up playing fucking Ghosts and Goblins. Oh, that's the <laughs> hardest game of all time. The hardest right. game in the world, yeah. That game put hair on my chest. <laughs> I was an eight-year-old with a full hairy chest. Yeah, exactly. But but you just feel really good when you when you actually uh, play through a game like that. Right? Yeah. And we didn't want to have we didn't really want to make the game too hardcore. No. But also we saw a lot of games in the recent years that were kind of uh, in the recent years that were kind of easy and right. You just, just hit right and you you finish the game. And the game kinda holds kinda your like hand that. all the time, tells yeah. you you should go here and kill that guy, and then you should go there and kill that guy, and you're like. Let me let me do it myself. I want to enjoy the game. Yeah, no, and it's totally got that uh, Metroidvania thing of open world. Yeah, yeah, open world, and you sort of have to go here, That's pull a lever, come back here. To do me, that. the most exciting thing is just seeing that entire map go and be like, "Ooh, I have to fill this all in." I love yeah. filling in <laughs> maps more than anything, uh, and uh, I, th I thought that was amazing. And I also think it's a very artsy game and a very pretty game and a very emotional game. And as much as I love those games, often the the like focus is on the story and uh, how pretty it is, and this game actually it's all of that. Plus, it's like a, it's like a difficult game. So I think that's something you don't see a lot in the arts here. But uh, what I also liked about it is that the controls feel very tight. Like if I see this game, if I see videos of this game, I get the sense in my head like uh, it's gonna feel a little floaty when you jump on a platform. It, it, you know, just not gonna feel that precise. But when I played it, it actually took me a second to get used to how good the controls were. You were overcompensating. Is yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was used to other like current like side scrollers that are a little like floatier. This feels very tight, like the controls that's are really good. That's not one priority. You know, the, the game has to play well, and the controls are just like, that's your interface with the game. That's right. what you do mm -hmm. all the time, right? So if you don't feel one with your character, and you're not over you were talking about the difficulty you know, just, just earlier, and you know, if, 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 you will wanna if, if you're failing at a challenge, and you feel like the game is to blame for it. You want to throw the controller at the ground and stop playing. Right. Then, then we failed. Right. Right. As, as, as developers, we we want people to 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 overcome those challenges. And it's also c you know c coming back to the story of Ori and his this orphan, this this uh, coming of age story. He he's going through difficult times uh, in the forest, and he needs to basically save save the forest. And uh, it's a difficult job as a forest spirit to save a forest. Oh I no, mean, yeah. totally. Yeah. So yeah. We want people to feel that, you know, and 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 the difficult like. We, I mean, we are referencing those older games, right? Um, but we, we are building the difficulty level in a, in a way where we, we always make sure that people have enough time with the new abilities that they acquire um, right. to, get, to get to connect with the character, to the connect with the controls, get to feel the controls. And when they're ready, we throw that you know, next level of the challenge uh, right. at them. And, 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 always th and we were trying to walk that thin line where people, it's not like too hard for them to be really frustrated all the time, but it's hard enough for people to have a really, this this refreshing sense of satisfaction of accomplishing something, getting beating that that new dungeon or that 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 section, a and I think that a lot of games don't do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of games it feels like it's the game's fault that you died, and yep. in this one you only can, you blame, can only blame yourself. yourself. You Poor can only <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't curse uh, the c the programmers. You just don't curse the programmers. You we just feel bad. I think we were They're generally awesome. a little bit frustrated with um, platforming games. Yeah. Because a lot of them, like, there are a lot of really, like, cool-looking platformer games out there, right? But uh, then I think a lot of game designers today rely a little bit too much on kind of, like, the physics engines, where it's like, hey, you played a game, and it isn't kind of, like, completely pixel precise. And at Moon, every single one of our games, and there's a couple of new things that we're working on right now, <coughs> but every single, single <laughs> one of our games... Uh, starts with and has to start with oh my god that feels really good yeah Kay. and the same thing was true for Ori right where there were games out there that looked good right but then when you play it 
within like two or three minutes, I'm like, ah, th this doesn't feel as precise or as right. good as I, as I think it should, right? right? But that's the super most important thing when you actually start on something. Uh, one, uh, one of the things we can probably share with people, like when the game is out now, finally, like one of the older videos when we just started, it's actually funny how, you know, art was, it, it hard, it's, it's kind of, it was never a number one priority for us. It's a huge, huge priority. Hmm. But before we started like putting all the art and figuring out what the world will look like, it was always it always starts with those contours and like solids that we built. And the enemies are just like white jumping boxes. They don't have <laughs> art. They don't have a design to they it. Don't, yeah. No sound, no nothing. And you just have to make that play well. You have to make it satisfying, and you make and have to make it pretty. fun. Yeah. And if if it's not, that's how we design all the levels. And before those levels play well, we don't put on all the art and go through all the you know huh. hurdles of like. Putting all the finesse, you, you can yeah, hopefully see that. Yeah, I think as an as an analogy, if you if you look at kind of like how Pixar, for example, is making a film, right? They're storyboarding everything, mm -hmm. and if the film isn't good in storyboard, then it's just not going to be good when it's all fully animated and so on. And I think with a game, it's very similar, right? Where if, if you're the designer and you can't make the little gray box in an ugly little world feel really damn good, right? Then it's not going to feel better when it's a really nicely modeled character and so on. Right. So that's, that's our focus there. Or if it's, it's like an sculpture. An yeah, or if it's an 80s movie, it's like the girl you fall in love with when she has her glasses on, and then she takes the glasses yeah. off and becomes hot. <laughs> and you're like, aha! Yeah, yeah. Right? exactly. That's a great analogy. <laughs> that's exactly what I was My saying. analogy was, she's all that. It, that's, <laughs> that's the one of those that I know. Same thing, basically same thing. Am I a bet? Am I a bet? Am I a fucking bet? That's um, what she says. What can you tell us about, because we've... Anyway, Rachel Lee Cook, great actress. Rachel Lee Cook, we miss you. Where are you? Gra she's around. What is she in? I met her recently. I know. He could not. He was very excited. Anyway, uh, not a big deal. We follow each other on Twitter. Um, continue talking. She follows uh, me too. It's fine. By the way, she uh, took her glasses. Uh, 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 continue. Uh, uh, my question for you is, we've played for a few hours, so we've kind of have gotten a hint of maybe the main boss. Uh, I'm not going to say boss, the main like uh, antagonist. enemy, antagonist. Kuro. 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 What, what can you tell us about Kuro? Can you tell us anything? Well, we wanted to have a character in the game, and I'm probably, this is a little bit spoilery, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but basically, I mean, when we actually create characters, and that's true for every, every character and for everything in the world, right? We want to create something believable, and we, we we don't like antagonists that are just kind of like, hey, I'm evil because I want to take over the world, right? <laughs> that there has to be something more. Like a motivation. Yeah. A motivation, right? Where you, you really understand why the character is doing what, what that character is doing. And Kuro is, I think, that kind of character, that kind of person that you can, where you can understand why she's doing what she's doing. At the same time, at the very beginning, you might not understand exactly why yeah. she's that angry. So you, it have to be relatable evil, not like moms who are just like monsters. monsters. <laughs> Evil for no reason. Complete monsters. Because it sounds like almost even you could yeah. do a game from Kuro's perspective and like, oh, well, Kuro's just trying to fix stuff also. Ori too. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> that's Kuro Ori back too. there. Kur <laughs> There's some extra people back there listening, so you should shout a little bit louder about that. <laughs> yes. Mori. Mori. Come on, guys. Mori. Um, <laughs> hashtag Mori. Uh, great. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, the what I noticed while playing the game is that it feels like there's a really fully fleshed out world. Like there's a mythology to this world. There's a lot of when you start off, it's not one of those games like where you're just going left to right. There's like a, it feels like a full world with its own like rules and characters and uh, you know that kind of stuff. Like the reality of the world is very fully fleshed out. So it, it feels like you guys spent a lot of time coming up with like the mythos of the world. About four years. Four years? Yeah, yeah, we spent four years in the game, so. Pretty much. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of work that got into that, and I mean, a lot of times we, I mean, we iterate basically on everything, right? So the game basically was made two or three times over, if you, if you actually much. think about how, how many times we redid things. Generally at Moon Studios, we, we just really want to make the best stuff and right. just have an extremely high quality standard. So a lot of times we, we just we just know that when an artist, and we, we hire great people, but still when an artist does something, usually his first uh, iteration on something just isn't good enough, right? Then we do it again and then maybe again. And I think people and especially gamers kind of like want that kind of level of quality. And I think it brings us back to a time where, you know, in the 8 and 16-bit days, there, there were a lot of limitation 
when it came to, well, we have a game and it can only be two megabytes. Yeah. So you really Major? think about, well, which levels do I actually leave in the game? What's really important, right? And that's what we wanted to create, right? Really, we built so many levels at the start of uh, the start of production, and then we just left the stuff in that was really good. Yeah, we cut a lot. We were pushing Thomas to because we wanted to actually finish the game, and it's important to not have 500 rooms in the game when you want to finish yeah. it. So we ended up with like 250. And what was How? like the <laughs> challenges? Like, were there any? What were the big like sort of uh, uh, obstacles you hit while trying to make this game? Is this the year? Well, it's a Metroidvania, right? So it's all interconnected. It's one big maze. Yeah. It's not a linear game where you can just like shuffle the levels around, and make it work. It uh, has yeah. to work as a bigger whole. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with like how you get the new abilities, and you can you can go to places where you couldn't go before. Right. Like I feel like there's a higher jump coming for me because I could see places, but I can't get there yet. Or jump, exactly. or other maybe abilities that you will. Oh. Find okay. In the game. <laughs> I was actually playing a later level here, a teleport kind of thing. You, you get later. Anyway. Maybe. Might not might not be a teleport in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. And you mentioned Ghosts and Goblins being one of your favorite games growing up. What what were your what kind of games did you play growing up? Uh, when we were growing up or Yeah, growing up, yeah. Oh uh, my me personally it's like I'm actually a PC gamer okay. more more than a, I'm a console gamer. Okay. Um but you know a lot of it's been it's been a really a really great uh, you know last generation especially, you know, with games like Portal we yeah. were completely amazing, Portal's and one of the game. games where where we're like absolutely, you know, inspirational for us as starting developers. You know, it was this whole breakout of indie games. You know, you had games like Braid, uh, you know, Limbo. Oh yeah, Braid. And, 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 and it was great. it was in, in Super Meat Boy, and, uh, and that's it was a very was hard game. Yeah. 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 And then those games for us were like, okay, this is this is our time. You know, we can we can go and make our own game, and yeah. we can make a difference. Right. Great. Well, um, I think. I mean, is there anything else? We oh, should how do they get the game? How do our listeners get the game? Buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. What platforms uh, is it on? It's on Xbox One. Uh, it comes out tonight at midnight, right? It comes it out comes tomorrow. It comes out on March 11th. Uh, actually, for North America, it comes out tomorrow, 5 p.m. Okay. okay. So tomorrow, 5 p.m. It's, it's March 11th uh, is, is our kind of like official date, um, and it's on Xbox One and PC for now. Okay, Xbox great. And it's PC. a fantastic game. We've been playing it for the last few days, and Thank I you. absolutely love the game. I want to actually go home and play more of it. Uh, Thomas, uh, Gennady, thanks so much for coming. Thanks, thanks Thank for having us. So to us. Uh, um, and thanks else? for, uh, I think that's it, right? Go eat, drink, play you video games. Party. You know what to do.